welcome to our live crafting session this evening just checking my sound levels looks okay to me do shout if you um, are having problems hearing me but according to my computer the sound levels are about right possibly a little bit high so good evening and welcome my name is Jenny McCormack if this is the first time you've come across my Facebook Live or my upload to YouTube, then welcome. I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator and I'm based in the market town of Brackley. Hi Zanna, I hope you're well. Um, Brackley is in the county of Northamptonshire in the Midlands in the UK. This week and every week, I choose a product, most typically a stamp set. This one, as you can see, is called Sweet and Precious. And I try and use that stamp set for lots of different projects, mostly cards, to be fair, because um, that's my main love, is making cards and teaching people how to make cards themselves. And so I focus on that in any particular week sometimes i add in other products as well and sometimes they may not be stamps at all they might be um, stencils or dies for example so our stamp set this week was sweet and precious as you can see it's got three sets of animals with a parent and a child so we've got the penguins we've got the very popular giraffes and we've also got the sloths there are four sentiments as well bring on the cuddles I'm always here for you appreciating all you do and I believe in you and there's some extra leaves here that coordinate in particular with the sloth image but you could use them obviously with the giraffe as well let me quickly show you some of the cards I've made this week they're all on a similar theme um, obviously using the animal stamp set so this one is on a craft coloured note card and I've stamped the giraffe on the large circle from the stylish shapes dies and then I've added the for you sentiment from the layering leaves stamp set I'm hoping you can see that okay And let me just make sure that I can see the live on the live, as it were. I can see Zana has commented, so we're all good. Oh, thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Okay, so there's one set of drafts on a craft note card. And then we've got this one that I did using the artistically inked background stamp to create this really lovely edge. A piece of cellophane on my foot driving me mad there we go um, and then this one if you saw my posting in the week I found some giraffe paper this is what has given me the idea for today's technique which is creating your own animal print stamps and um, this was retired possibly last year we had some animal prints up to last up to the summer uh, but I think this predates that probably by another 12 months. It's gold on one side and then it's crumb cake and espresso on the reverse side. So I've added that one in. Um, here's a couple from Coffee and Card that I worked on to show everybody how to create the different cards and just using different colourways. This is the reverse side of that. So this is actually soft suede on a crumb cake colour and that's what we're going to try and replicate today or something similar and then here's the penguin and I added the sun by punching out a circle from the post-it note popping the open circle on there and then going over with a blending brush so you can see those um, from our live on Monday here's another one very similar Here's some of the sloths with a bit more of the edge in detail. And then some of those lovely, cute 
penguins and then using the straight side of this same stamp as I've used here so this stamp has got a sort of I'm trying to think of the word an uneven edge it's not the word I wanted but that will do and then it's also got a straight edge which is what I've used on there so lots of fun cards so what I want to show you is how to create a background and this works perfectly for um, lots of different things it could actually be camouflage and some matching envelopes um, but I'm going to use it hopefully to make a kind of um, giraffe background so let me find that piece of paper here so this is what I'm going to try and recreate and it's really simple to do if you have a red rubber stamp set because what we're going to do is we're going to use the off cuts from the stamp set and we're going to cut those into some uneven shapes now you can also do this by using the reverse side of a photopolymer stamp obviously we can't ink up this particular one because it'll go on to the sticky side but if you've got photopolymer stamps you can just use the other side of those the only problem with doing that is it can stain um, the other side of your stamp which you may or may not want so what I'm going to do is cut up elements from this piece here so this is effectively um, waste rubber now I keep it in my stamp set so that I know if I've got any stamps missing because I take my stamps out a lot um, if I just had them here I'd have to sit there and say okay there's eight in there one two and count them up if I've got my index sheet in there I can see at a glance if there's one missing and if it is missing which one it is but we're going to use this and all I'm going to do is cut some shapes from the rubber now because they are uh, for the giraffe you can make them as rounded as you want if you look at the sample here they're just all sorts of different shapes not necessarily rounded some of them have got you know points and things like that so it's up to you how much of this you trim down and change okay so I've got one there and then I've got a little piece here so that would work I'm just going to take that little corner off like so and you can use even the smallest pieces okay so I can just take this round don't want it too straight and I'm just cutting fairly straight through the rubber and the foam behind it so you can see how this hopefully is going to come together because what we're going to do is just position that on our stamp block <laughs> acrylic block okay now if you're using photopolymer stamps you don't get this extra bit because the stamps are already cut out and with our red rubber ones they are cut out but you get the remaining pieces so I've got a good piece here so you could make quite a large piece and then quite a small one now when you're stamping you don't have to put these all onto one block and in fact sometimes you don't want to do that because it can be difficult then to 
to make it look really um, natural. So I've got a really sharp corner here, which I don't really want. I just want it shaped slightly. Now, you could do this and make zebra stripes just by cutting longer thin pieces like so. Obviously I've gone for the giraffe look. You could do um, leopard or cheetah using more rounded elements if you wanted to. Um, let's see, let's get rid of that little bit. I've got a little, uh, quite a big piece here and that's got a nice sort of circle on it. So do you get the, I guess you get the idea. Right, so you can either pre-position those ready for stamping or you can just attach one or two at a time and stamp your background that way. And it's useful to have some smaller ones for filling in any gaps. And what you want to try and do is cut fairly straight through here, like so. All right, let's just see what we've got with that. So I'm just throwing away these extra little pieces. I'm going to pop that back in there for the moment. Oh, absolutely. Yes, in back in the day, um, they used to provide a sheet like that that weren't even die cut. They were just on a sheet and you had to cut round them and then mount them onto a matching block. Then we had them die cut in this way. Um, and then we've moved on obviously to add in photopolymer. I would say though that the detail you get from these stamps surpasses photopolymer. Photopolymer is good and it works and it's less expensive to make, less expensive to purchase. But in my own opinion, honest opinion, um, the detail that you get, particularly where you've got shading and things like that, is much, much greater with red rubber. Okay, now I've got a piece of crumb cake. So what I'm going to do is just have a little practice to see what it looks like before I put it onto my background piece. So this is crumb cake, which is very similar to the backing that we have there. And I'm just going to grab a block here and just going to make a bit of a pattern. As I said, you don't have to um, does help to take the backing off there because it won't stick otherwise. That one's all right. There we go. So you can either create the whole pattern or a section of a pattern on a block. So you could take a, obviously take a bigger block or you could just do some smaller sections. So I've got a couple of colours. I've got pecan pie, I've got copper clay and espresso because I'm not sure which colour is going to look the best. Oh, hi Carol from hot and stormy Florida. You did say it was going to be stormy. Thank you so much for joining us, Carol. I'm looking forward to meeting Carol next week. Um, so we're creating a background so not a new technique this has been around for quite a long time but it's one that's easily forgotten so this is pecan pie so I'm just going to stamp this and see what that looks like okay so quite deep mainly because that's a fairly new ink pad so I'm going to try one of each and then I'll decide I'm not worrying about cleaning these in between. This is only a scrap piece. So you can use this for all sorts of animal prints. As I said, um, if you're good at um, drawing and cutting, you could even make paw prints 
Hi Catherine, hope you're well. Um, so that's copper clay, which is a bit too red for my liking. And let's try espresso, which I think might be too dark. So we just cut up the offcuts from the red rubber from our Sweet and Precious stamp set. I'm just trying it on this piece here. And the good thing is you can just pop these back in with the stamps so that they're ready there for next time. I've got some smaller ones here cut. So I'm thinking probably pecan pie, but possibly stamped off. Let's have a look. Let's tuck these away. So I'll just try both and then we'll decide. Oh, I'm sure we'll have a great time. Really, really looking forward to it. Well, I will be when I'm ready. <laughs> There's always so much to do beforehand. Okay, so that's full strength. And I'm just going to do the same. And see what that's like. So that's full strength pecan pie. That is half strength. I think it might need to be full strength actually. Now I can see that I've got on one of these I've got something odd going on on this corner. So if I can work out which piece it is and then I can just tidy it up. It's this one here. So yeah it's got a little bit of an odd end so I'm just going to round that a little bit more. And you can you can make stamps out of all of these offcuts. You know, you can make um, all sorts of shapes and things like that. And you could, if you wanted to, um, with a knife, a craft knife, you could cut a pattern into this as well. So if you wanted, as I say, paw prints or something, or you wanted stones or anything like that, that would definitely work. So let's just try that now. I'm just going to turn this over. This is just my practice piece. Yeah, I think that works nicely. And you can just turn it round and use different elements as you need. Like so. Okay, so that's how we created it. And what I will do on this is I will stick this in the stamp case and I'm going to write on here this was pecan might find a thicker pen might be better just going to write on here this might do the job this is pecan pie this was copper clay it's all very well now but if I get this out in six months time I won't remember uh, this is early espresso so it's a bit like stamping out your each of your stamps to start with and then this is cake and pie second generation so in other words I stamped it and then stamped it again okay so for my card I'm going to use I've got a white card base ready and I've got an early espresso layer so I'm sort of replicating this. Now I'm going to take a piece of crumb cake, stamp all over and then I'm going to trim this down and the reason I do that is I can stamp over and then choose the best part of that that I, the best bit that I like basically. Oh espresso stamped off. Let's try it and see. My espresso is um, rather well used and it probably needs re-inking. So it could be that it's um, it might be too light, I don't know. Let's try it. Oh no, that still works, doesn't it? It just loses a little bit of the definition because it's a completely solid face of the stamp 
and therefore a lot of the ink is being transferred. So I'm going to stick with pecan pie on the basis also that this will um, lighten up slightly as it completely dries. So just going to start in the corner like so. As I said, you could do individual ones. I find it quicker to do a set at a time. Let's bring this right down here. But if you had some small areas, I've got these ones here that I could use to fill in. Let's see if I can, I think I'll be able to get most of it in. Like so. And obviously you could take one or two off if it was getting in the way. Let's take that one off for example. I'm going to pop that on there. So the secret is always to keep rotating so that you haven't got the same pattern each time. So just pop that one in there. So I haven't decided which bit of this and I may not need to stamp that middle bit because I'm actually going to have um, a circle inside but there we go. And I'm going to trim it down so I'm not worried about the edges, but what I will do is just grab another block. Oh, hello. I've got a cat join us. I'm hoping he's not going to knock anything over while he's at it. So I can just pop that one in there. And that one in there like that. So as I said you could do this individually if you wanted to just take you a little bit longer. Okay so I'm really happy with that I think that's worked particularly well and on the basis that actually it's going to be covered up it's just a background. <laughs> yes we could have Paul Pints for real. They're quite right. Zach is my black cat. Or my, I should say my daughter's black cat. Um, it's just the other side of the camera. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do is I'll leave that for a second. Let's fold this out. Let's just quickly stamp our giraffe on a clean bit of card. Oh, I've got some ink there. That's not good, is it? Let me just wipe that away, otherwise that will be transferring itself. There we go. Yeah. Okay, so in here under here somewhere so I've got this one I could also use this one here but I just felt I was losing a fair bit of the card so I want to show the background really so I'm just going to grab early espresso and stamp the giraffe like so just looking for my large block I'm sorry Why my large blocks are in the kitchen? I don't know. Hi, Valerie. 
No, I think you're right, Catherine. <laughs> don't really have scallops around a <laughs> around a set of giraffes, do you? Okay, so I like to take the ink pad to the stamp, especially a detailed stamp, because you want to make sure that you've inked it up evenly. And also it's easier to hold the ink pad, which is smaller than the block with the stamp, which is quite large. And I'm just going to stamp this across here. Obviously I'm losing the edges of this a little bit. There we go. There's our lovely parent and child. May or may not be a mother, of course. And for colouring that, um, I just use a little light petal pink. That's my go-to colour if you watch me use any blends pens for faces or animal faces in particular I like to use light petal pink for the ears or noses just going to a little bit around the baby's nostrils and muzzle there and then just straight over I'm going to use light crumb cake Let's get one that's got a bit more in it though. There we go, light crumb cake. That looks a bit healthier, doesn't it? So because this has got so much colouring on the stamp, it's really easy just to add a little bit of colour. Mind the eyes because you don't want to lose that the white definition that makes that eye look so realistic. So you don't even need to add multiple colours to this if you don't want to. You could add dark crumb cake if you want to do a little bit of shading. But to be honest, there's enough shading built in. Okay, and then the little one here. I have to say, I think the giraffes were the most popular at Coffee and Card this week. Quite a few people chose the sloths. And a few people chose the penguins, but the giraffe was definitely the favourite. Okay, so I just lift that up. Hopefully, if it doesn't go completely out of focus, you can see that. Was I washing the blocks? Or when I, when I disappeared? Oh no, I wasn't. No, they were still in their case. I think what had happened was I brought um, my bag in and I picked up some shopping on the way home from Coffee and Card and I put it in the top of my bag that had the blocks in. So I obviously took the blocks out to unload my little bit of shopping. Okay, that's it. I won't do a lot of detail because you've seen that already. Um, you can watch the replay. Um, which is on YouTube now. Okay, so let's see, put this card together and add a sentiment. So here is my handmade. It's not that different, the colour's slightly different, but I think, and maybe it's slightly bigger in scale, but um, I think it works. So if you do get large sections of bits from your stamp and you normally cut and take these out then keep them somewhere separate sometimes where you've got a single big stamp and there's a whole section around it you can use that to cut out and create all sorts of shapes you could cut triangles and make triangle backgrounds great for children as well okay I've got a side fold standard landscape card going to attach that so I'm just using my wet glue onto here and the measurement of this in centimeters 
I've cut the espresso layer to 10 by 14.35 and then I'm going to cut this down to measure I think it's going to make it eight and a half so it's two centimeters smaller than the um, base card um, and you can just choose which is the best bit of that that you want really and so it's going to be two centimeters smaller like so and obviously you can use that to pop inside of your card don't waste it but I do like to use a larger piece than I need rather than cutting this to size and then feeling you've got to get it exact first time round so this is going to go onto there and then we've got our giraffe now I could make this of course open at the top like that or something different and have a sentiment across the bottom why not hi Annabelle so what I might do is wrap some shall I wrap some ribbon round or maybe I'll just put a sentiment on I think I'll leave it as I've stuck those those pieces down so I'm going to put this flat and then use our foam pads our dimensionals for the parent and child <laughs> giraffe to be so careful these days don't you well, I think in the animal world I don't think they'd really mind Hi Diane, thanks for joining us. So I've been showing how to make your own giraffe background. This could be anything, so it could be giraffes, it could be zebras, it could be cheetahs, tigers, anything like that. Just by using the offcuts from the edge of the rubber stamp. So I've literally just cut these pieces off around the edge and made them into shapes and then I put those onto a block and then I just stamped them like so you can see where that pattern is like that this is my little practice so I've done a practice with some different colors and I'll add that keep that in with my stamp set to remind me which colors I've used and I'll cut a strip of that to go inside so just for speed I'm going to pop this on here grab some dimensionals and then I'll put a sentiment underneath it is clever isn't it but you could do anything you could make foliage out of it as long as you've got a big enough piece to cut as you wish and I just cut it with scissors and then just cut it straight through not angling it or anything just cut it straight through and then you can just tidy it up take off any edges right there's one there still no that's it okay there we're gonna go there's our giraffe and I've got this little piece is a bit too small but I'm going to put this on the inside and then I'll just pop a sentiment on the bottom um, let's just see what I've got to hand and let's trim this down as well it's a little bit too wide for my liking so I'm just going to make it a bit narrower so this is currently just over two centimeters going to make it one and a half actually it might just make it like that I'm just using the lines of the trimmer 
to keep it straight like that so I could put one on the card and I could put one on the envelope so which one do I like the best that works so I can just put it from one side and trim it at the end or just put it across the middle and trim it whatever you prefer okay don't go too mad with the glue just going to pop this a little way up from the bottom like so can't believe it's Friday tomorrow oh goodness me so we have coffee and card tomorrow Monday and Tuesday and if you're local and normally come to coffee and card there's no coffee and card the bank holiday weekend so the Friday and the Monday and the Tuesday because I'm not around okay let's just find a small sentiment to pop across the bottom I've got some little ones here this one might work and I wonder if bring on the cuddles will fit it might be a little bit too big I believe in you bring on the cuddles Ooh, might just fit so this makes a great baby card doesn't it for a new arrival okay let's just use that and just so that I can see whether this is going to fit I'm going to turn this over to the back and stamp on the back so that I'm not wasting the panel if it doesn't actually fit so I bring on the cuddles I think it will be all right yes so this looks like it's slightly more over to the left and slightly low so I'm going to go slightly to the right and slightly high it may be the way I put the label on of course there we go bring on the cuddles Oops. and let's pop a couple of these foam pads like so just put on two that will be fine <sighs> Zach is still standing the other side of the um, camera used to go a little bit to the right so don't push it down until you've got it in position that you're happy with just allow it to drop onto the paper and then you've got time to lift it and position it there we go so there's our first card and our first technique which is creating your own animal print background just cutting up the spare pieces of your stamps and then stamping those in this case I've stamped it onto some crumb cake but I'll see you stamp it onto appropriate yes you could stamp it with um, baby colours so you could stamp it in pinks for example that would look really pretty wouldn't it pink giraffe colours behind or um, blue so you could do it in bubble bath for the light pink or balmy blue for the blue or pool party that would be really nice that's a great idea Zanna thank you and then this piece I can pop on the envelope and I can add, attach a ribbon and stuff like that okay so that's our first technique so i hope you like that and i hope you give it a go as well as i say you can cut any shape out of the off cuts from your stamps but they do need to be ideally the red rubber 
Okay, for my second card, I'm going to stamp the penguins and I just want to go over how to do um, the masking to get a whole bunch of penguins. And so let's grab the penguin stamp, which is here. So what I want to do is... And I've cut this panel out ready is just have a whole bunch of penguins I could do it all the way over I may um, what I might do is put a small sentiment up here and then oh yes a lemon that's a great idea great idea then it could be either couldn't it okay so the thing with masking is you want to stamp your image onto a post-it note and what I like to do is you want a post-it note with a, a fair bit of sticky you could also use our masking paper it's perfect for that because it's quite thin and what you want to do is make sure when you're stamping it is some of the image is on what would be the sticky part otherwise it's not going to stick down so very often depending on the stamp I will try and stamp it on the side or the longest side. Uh oh, Zach's on the move. Fingers crossed, he doesn't take anything with him. Okay, so just going to pop this on a block. I'm going to stamp it in black only because that's the colour that I'm using. And I've got a card ready that I'm going to use. And this paper is from the Fun Zoo Crew papers that match the stamp set but I do rather like this black and white and we had a team meeting yesterday and I used the papers for the project that we were making okay so this is just for the mask so it doesn't have to be perfect find the sticky side and if you can put the longest piece of your stamp along the the edge where it's sticky and you'll notice that I've actually got three post-it notes because what I'm going to do is first of all put the lid on my ink bye Catherine nice to see you thanks for popping over so I don't put my elbow in it so what I'm going to do is cut the penguin out and you want to cut just literally just inside so if I take this piece you can just see the edge of the stamp what you don't want to do is cut and have a gap it doesn't matter if you're slightly in okay better to be inside than out and I do try and choose shapes that are relatively simple to cut around So by doing this, I'm actually cutting three masks at the same time. I'm all for saving time and effort when I'm card making. I may not need this little bit here at the bottom. But the easiest thing to do is cut it ready. And then if you want to add a penguin somewhere, you've got the whole thing ready. Okay, so there's our penguin cut out and I want to finish with a penguin, let's say, here and then all the other penguins are going to be behind. So, let's bring in our piece. Now, if you've seen masking before, this won't be anything new to you, um, but it is a great way of adding depth to your stamped projects. Okay, let's grab this grab the ink pad ink this up again I can see a thread just trim this off so I don't want that going on my stamp okay so this ink pad is the standard black ink pad that's all I need for this purpose 
I have multiple ones, which is why it's got number three on it, and you can get refills for this. So if you use black a lot, you can get the refill to fill it up. You don't have to buy a new ink pad. So here we are. I'm going to put this penguin here just at the bottom, like so. And you always start with whatever it is you want in the front, which I know seems really back to front, but that's the way it is. I'm going to take the mask, or one of the masks, and put it over our stamped image, like so. And then I'm going to stamp another set of penguins here. And it will look like these penguins are behind our first one. And it doesn't matter that this bit here on the right um, is going over the mask. You won't see that one. Okay. So if I now take this off, you can see we've got, I know she looks a little bit odd, maybe. <laughs> it does look a bit odd, doesn't it? But hey-ho, penguins are penguins doing penguin things. Okay, so what I might do is add another one up here. And maybe I'll space this one a bit further so you can see the baby penguin. Okay, so this is a standard stamping technique. Uh, so what you need to do is make sure that you move this across, otherwise you'll have half the penguin stamped. So let's give this one a little bit of space. Like so. There we go. Alright, so you can just see this one's in front of the other one. And then what I'm going to do to show you the full effect is I'm going to put one behind there. So what you want to do is cover up all of those. And you can see it's just inside of there and now I can put another penguin up here now obviously if it was a single penguin on its own it would probably look a little bit better but oops attached it to that <laughs> I attached it to the paper And that's because I've cut this to size rather than having a bigger area to play with. So, fingers crossed. Let's just... I'm just going to stick that on there so it doesn't move. Okay. So if I peel that one away and that one away, you can see the other penguins behind. And if I just stamped it on top, they would all be overlapping. So I think what I'm going to do is just put one more up there. This works particularly well with um, animals, but also flowers where you want to put the leaves behind the flowers, for example. So now I've got to cover those two and this one here. Like so. So whatever I put in here, the bit that you see is the bit that's behind, if that makes any sense. Let's 
slightly different height. There we go. So if I peel these all away, we've now got a stash of, <laughs> a stash of penguins. I can't remember what the collective pronoun for penguins is. I'm sure somebody will know. Okay, so there are our penguins. You can see some of the babies there. You can see three of the little ones. And all I did for the colouring of the penguins, if I just bring in my... Um, this is the envelope. So all I did was assume that these were like um, emperor penguins. I'm not really up on my penguin knowledge. So a little bit of a light yellow here and here. And if you can make these a little bit different as well. Because obviously not all penguins have exactly the same colouring. So that one, um, I'm just going to put a little bit on the edge of this one and on here. And then just use a darker colour. This happens to be dark daffodil delight, but really whatever you've got. And if you've got watercolour pencils, you could use those. These are our alcohol markers. Just put a little dot on there, not too much. And then I'm just going to blend the two of those colours together. It's going to make this look a little bit different with a bit less colour. Hello Cassie. Cassie my dog is waiting for a walk. She has had dinner, I promise. So I'm just using the blending pan across the two colours so that you get rid of that line and you get just a soft line in between like so and you want to use the lighter colour for that there we go so we've got a whole set of penguins there on the left and I'm just going to pop a sentiment on the right and I'm hoping this sending hugs will fit because that's quite appropriate, isn't it? Um, sending hugs because they're all sort of hugging, aren't they? Hmm. It's a little bit squashed up. So maybe I'll do a hello here and the sending hugs on the inside. And then this is going to get layered up on my black and white layer. And when you've got masks like this for the penguin, put them all together and keep them in your stamp set because you can use those again and again, really until the post-it note gets too thin or too inked up. So let's put hello there. It's a little bit smaller. I'll just use the black. And then we're done. Oh, I can't see the clock because Zach is right in front. Just coming up to 8 o'clock, so that's perfect. My one hour session on Thursday. just want to stamp this on here to make sure it's okay as it is bring this down And that's going to go on to my card. 
and one other thing you can do um, oh I've also got some black and white gingham ribbon so I might put a little bow here on the right hand side but the other thing you can do if you've got blends pens um, and I'm just going to do it in the middle because I'm not sure I'm going to use it for this particular card but you can colour in so if you wanted yellow stripes for example or any other colour you can use your blends pens to colour the background so you could have that in there I think I'm just going to leave it as the white because there's not a huge amount of area around it so I'm just going to layer these up like that so that's going to go onto my base card we've got our fun fox on the uh, motorbike just looking for my glue so we have a new stamp set of the week starting tomorrow uh, well the, it actually starts next week but I start with coffee and card tomorrow they're the first ones to experience that and so we hold that in Brackley on a Friday that's in Northamptonshire in Toaster on a Monday I think I'm just going to do that flat because it's quite a big panel and then Brackley again on a Tuesday so if you're local to Northamptonshire or passing through you're always welcome to join us okay just going to pop that in the centre Well, what I think is the centre anyway. Just doing it by eye, to be fair. Turn it over, make sure your table is dry before you do that. There we go. And then let's just add a bit of this cute black and white gingham ribbon. Got to love gingham. And in our new winter catalogue, we have a black and vanilla, so like an ivory colour slightly bigger ribbon that's really this one here how pretty is that doesn't quite go with that because it's cream not white um, so I'm just using this which is hmm I think it's retired I'm not a hundred percent sure so just gonna cut those pieces off like that maybe I'm going to make it a little bit smaller <laughs> I'd like it there but then this feels really gappy so I'm going to pop it here on the right hand side so it all flows in together and if I could see A glue dot that's exactly what I could use I can't see one so I'm just going to use a little bit of glue just going to trim this down a little bit more so you can use the wet glue it's a very strong glue but when you're using it with ribbon you just need to give it a little bit longer to dry all right it's not going to dry instantly like it does with card or paper so I'm just going to pop that on there and your best bet is to not use your hands use something else to push it down apply some pressure and then you're not going to get yourself covered in glue okay I'll just take a minute and that'll be set and there we go there's our penguins hi Ruth I hope you're well Zana says, I don't think the broomstick will make it that far. <laughs> you have to explain what you mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. So there we are, just a little bit of masking. 
and then this is making our own animal backgrounds using some offcuts of stamps and I've literally just cut those up into pieces and tried them out on a piece first with some different colour combinations and uh, as I said I've written on there which colours they are and then I'll put that in with the stamp set so we've got this lovely background with our own hand cut stamps and then this one just to remind you how to do a little bit of masking so you've got multiple animals oh I see <laughs> thank you oh yes you're quite right a little bit of a way to come isn't it and then we've got those lovely um, penguins so this was the inspiration for this card it was when I found that odd piece of retired designer paper and he had a small piece left and that's how um, it gave me the idea to show you or remind you if you haven't done it before how to make your own backgrounds and in particular animal backgrounds because you could do stripes for zebras um, stripes for tigers um, all sorts of combinations you could even cut paw prints if you wanted to so there we go thank you everybody I'm gonna have a little bit of a tidy up now take Cassie out for her walk before it's dark I can't believe it's getting dark already and it's only just gone eight o'clock um, so thank you so much everyone I did add a little strip of that handmade um, card on the inside as there was some left over so thank you very much I will be back let me see I'll be back on Monday morning for our new stamp set of the week for next week I'll be at coffee and card tomorrow Monday and Tuesday I won't be here on Thursday of next week because I'm um, I'm actually in well all being well of course I'm in Las Vegas um, with stamping up and I'm just thinking whether to add some of these. Now I just I showed these online. I'm pretty sure it was online the other day. We've got metallic enamel effects basics. So we've got a silver, we've got a copper, and we've got a gold. And when you use them, they maintain their height. You know, sometimes when you use glitter glue and you put some on it just sort of sinks into the paper um, well this um, doesn't so I'm just going to try it on here because I'm not sure which colour I'm going to use but let's just say this is the gold and so if you're good at icing you'll have no problems with this so oops so I've got three dots like that so if you can see how 3D that is, really stands up. And when it dries, it dries exactly like that. It doesn't sink away. So I might. This is rather nice. This copper actually. So if you don't have sequins or anything to hand, or you want to do something different, you could even write with that. I'm useless at that, so. Um, but that's the gold and the copper so I think the copper would look rather nice on there so I might add that um, later so thank you so much everyone do take care thank you for joining me do um, feel free to share the video with anybody and obviously you'll be able to catch this on YouTube uh, that will be uploaded either tonight or tomorrow and um, I hope you have a great weekend. I do have a team craft day coming up. I've got my class in the box coming up. I've got a customer craft day coming up in October. Booking for that will open at the weekend. And there is an early bird booking. And the projects are all Christmas related. And there will be at least eight projects to choose from. So watch out for details of that. That will come out by email. If you're not on my email list, um, don't hesitate to just message me with your email address and say you want to be added to the list. There's no obligation. You can unsubscribe, obviously, at any time. Um, but if you want to be the first to find out what's going on, um, you can do that or you can check out my events page. Uh, that will tell you what events are coming up. Thank you so much. Uh, lovely to have you join us, Diane. 
Um, Zana, Ruth, if you're still there, I think Catherine has gone. Um, uh, Valerie may or may not still be there, and Carol may or may not still be there. So thank you so much for joining me. Do take care, everyone, and I look forward to crafting with you soon. <laughs> thank you. Bye for now.